All right, first of all, thank you for joining me today. I know we've got 20 minutes, it's gonna go really quick, so I'm gonna go through this pretty quick. Um, should we defragment indexes? Of course we should, right? So, my name is Rob Mandeville. I'm a solution architect with SolarWinds, and this has been something that's been on my mind for a little bit, and so I thought I would just put some material together and kind of see where I landed. Um, this is my first time giving this presentation, so bear with me. I'm gonna see how it goes. So you guys are my, my QA. Appreciate it. Okay, just a show of hands. Who regularly, either, either manually when it's ready or you know, kind of stats are stale or something like that, or, or maybe even uh, scheduled wise, who does index maintenance? Okay, and you guys are, are doing what, reorgs? Rebuilds, depending on the fragmentation. Okay. Uh, by the way, I just want to make sure I state this. Uh, there's no right or wrong when it comes to this answer. There's just better sometimes. So really depends on your environment, your current storage architecture. A lot of things come into play. So I'm hoping to, to at least challenge some of the current positions, and I know that a lot of people have talked like, oh, you know, don't worry about fragmentation. Um, I think they're talking about something very specifically, so I kind of wanted to get into that today. Uh, just for the record, I did not have time to really bring columnar store indexes into play here, so I'm not going to take that into factor. This is just kind of old school. Okay, talk about some terminology. Uh, Internal versus external fragmentation. Who knows what I'm talking about? Okay, good, about half. Um, so internal fragmentation is, is, is really the, um, there's space present in the index page, right? So we could have an index created and have something like, you know, a thousand index records over, let's say a hundred pages, something like that. If tomorrow I delete, 50% of that data, that's gonna delete 50% of the rows. So the number of rows in my index now is gonna to go to 500. The challenge is I'm still gonna have 100 pages, right? So anytime I go after that index and it's on disk and I have to read it into cache, it's the exact amount of, same of workload to get it from disk to cache. Okay, everybody good? Okay, that's internal fragmentation. So external fragmentation is when the logical order of index gets out of sync with the physical order of the index. So the logical index or order might be, you know, row one, two, seven, three, five, 20, right? It just gets all scattered. So that's when we start to get this external fragmentation which also means that these index pages are living all over the place from a storage perspective, okay? So those pages are living wherever they might be. Make sense? Okay, cool. Just wanna make sure everybody's with me. Um, so when we think about indexes and the things that we can do, these maintenance things that you guys uh, just said that you're doing, so there's two concepts here. We have reorgs and then rebuilds. So rebuild, I just wanna make sure we're on the same page again. Um, index rebuild creates a brand new index, right? It gets rid of the old, creates a new one. If you stop the job, it has to be rolled back, but there's advantages to rebuilding an index. It means I can change the definition of the index settings, right? It's brand new, brand new object. Reorganization, it's definitely more lightweight. Um, and, and, and really what it does is it fixes the physical ordering to match the logical ordering. So remember I said when things were kind of all over the place, puts them back in order. But what it doesn't do is create a brand new object, right? Now this job can be canceled in the middle and it'll get through, let's say it sorted about half of them. It's okay. Half will be sorted, half won't, right? It doesn't care. So. Just wanna make sure everybody's on the same page there, uh, literally. Um, so my analogy was like a, a book index, right? So I can reestablish alphabetical order on my pages, and this is gonna be a reorg, 
but I can't necessarily change the way I created that index in the first place. So if I said in my original book, I'm gonna have an index, but you know, 50% is gonna be white space. When I do the, the reorg, I still have 50% white space, okay? If I create a brand new index at the back of the book, like rip all the pages out, put new pages in, then I can adjust that fill factor. All right, where are we on time? Doing pretty good. Um, so in, in, in this example that I'm talking about specifically, I'm gonna be referring to external fragmentation. And I believe this is where all the chatter comes in about do we care? Should we care? What should we do about it? And uh, you know, I'm gonna say, I'm actually in favor of not doing any kind of maintenance on indexes. I think that I could make a good strong argument, as I hope to today, that you could actually be hurting performance by doing this maintenance. Okay, if I let my indexes stay fragmented, chances are the pages will then, oh, by the way, I should describe, this image is like a VM implementation. Who here is running their machines on VMs? Probably about everybody at this point, right? Very common, if not the cloud, which then you don't really have control. So, but I guarantee they're running on VMs. <laughs> so, in a modern disk architecture, on a hypervisor like VMware, you get the guest operating system. It's actually just a bunch of files out there. And this is where the files are stored, okay? So we have this thing called this, this, this cache device. That's gonna be the thing that is serving things up. It's always gonna be SSD, by the way, always, with, uh, with VMs. On the backside of that, you have the capacity devices. Those capacity devices can be SSD, they could also be spinning disk, okay? The problem with that is that this can be scaled out you know, pretty, pretty extensively, but if it's spinning disk, certain operations are gonna take longer, spe especially depending on the RAID and stuff. Like you guys all know RAID 5 is like kind of, kind of death sentence as far as writes go. Um, so what I'm saying is if we allow for fragmentation to continue, chances are the pages for my indexes are eventually gonna be spread across a whole bunch of these capacity drives. Make sense? Okay, so if you guys are still with me on that one and, and give me that, <laughs> which I think, if I do a, especially a rebuild, what it's gonna force, or, or actually maybe even a reorg, so it's gonna, re yeah, a reorg as well, because it's gonna make the, the physical order match the logical. So what it's gonna force is that all my pages are start here and go ahead and write to this capacity device, right? It's now ordered, it's sequential, it's all on the same, same capacity drive. So if that happens, the main thing that is gonna occur that's gonna hurt performance is that now I've limited access to those pages to one controller. If it's fragmented, I've got as many controllers are on the backside of that VM. Does that make sense still? All right, who wants to play a game? I need five volunteers. Yep, come on up. Sorry, for those online, he might get in the way a little bit, but that's all right, they'll be here by the... All right, four more volunteers. All right, jump on up. Yep. Two more. All right. One more. One more. If not, I could be the other one. I could be the control group. How's that? <laughs> All right, I'll be the control group. Can you split that deck up four ways between the, the four of you? Oh, do you want to do it? Perfect. Why not? All right. You're the control group now. <laughs> All right, so we got about pretty even split. Okay, flipping one card at a time, I'm gonna have you four find all the twos. Flipping one card at a time, I'm gonna have you find all the twos. And go. I 
I just hope all the twos aren't right on top here. <laughs> all right. Perfect. Oh. He's got one. He's got two. <laughs> He's cheating now. Yeah. All right. Yeah, we can finish. Thank you all. Give him a round of applause. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. All right. So everybody get it? Make sense? Multiple controllers, one controller. Yep. They all had the same amount of data. It's just way faster to get through it if you have more controllers to go find it, right? OK, so that's actually my talk. I just wanted to put a seed in your mind and, and really have you go and, and check on what your modern disk architecture is like, because I think that's going to help you understand a little bit more about how SQL Server is now interacting with that on the back end, right? And by the way, it's not just the indexes that can get fragmented. It can be the data files, etc. And as long as we're talking about external fragmentation at the disk level, at the order level of my, my pages, then this will come into play. Cool. Um, yeah, that's really it. Any questions from the audience? Yeah. The allocation size for what? That you're using on disk, that you actually formatted the disk. If you, if you, in the old days, it used to be 64. You used to um, format it for 64K blocks. So if, your, if all your pages were in a row, you could potentially just pull one 64K block into memory, and that's all the data you need. Now if it's fragmented, you'd be pulling multiple blocks off the disk. But those, those one meg blocks could still exist. It could exist in four one meg blocks on the same devices. Yeah, and, and let me think about that. So if the blocks, if they're in memory, it doesn't matter. Then, then we're not talking about fragmentation. It's really at the disk level. But you're saying to go and access that, you would be pulling one meg in to memory. I don't know. I got to think about that one. Yeah, no, thank you. That's a good point. Like I said, this is my first presentation of this. So I'm, I'm going to fine tune it over time, but I appreciate it. Oh, a couple questions online. Will this behavior be the same for all hypervisors? To my understanding, yes, as far as the two main ones go. So I know it's true for VMware, and I believe it's true for Hyper-V as well. Uh, second question, aren't there memory benefits to... There's a correction, defragging. Oh, aren't there mem memory ben benefits to defragging indexes as ultimately you reduce your page count? Um, and, and there we're talking about, if you're talking about fixing the internal fragmentation aspect of it, the answer is absolutely yes. But again, I kind of qualified that in the beginning, I think, hopefully well enough, that we're really talking about external fragmentation. Uh, what about when you, <laughs> when you were making a, a query claims and uh, doesn't the, the SQL Server consider the quality of the index? So if it's very, very defragmented, doesn't it do that anymore? The optimizer? Yeah, the optimizer. The, the quality of the index? Yeah, or if, if I don't think the optimizer cares. No, it, ca it, it does care about size. Okay, so, so, so if you do have internal fragmentation, that can impact the optimizer's decision. That's true. No, the fragmentation percentage does not matter.
Yeah. That would be my number one argument to not do it while, uh, while they're online. Um, do you have any ideas about this? Um, See the production environment go down because of the video. Because you'd re really be doing it online, right? Any index maintenance? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you can't afford any downtime, that's a business decision. But I would say probably doesn't matter anyway. Has anybody benchmarked the results of performance before and after? Yeah? And what'd you get? Yeah. Yep. What I would recommend is just to do only reorganize. We are only reorganized. We're 24-7 and just only It does. Yep. I think we, yeah. I think we had a question about that yesterday in a different talk, but yeah, about the, the indexes being locked and then becoming a blocking situation for other workload. Um, oh. Um, yeah, let me take the one in the room real quick and then I'll get this one. Sorry, can you say that one more time? Can you? So the question is, should we be focused on rebuilds and get rid of, to get rid of internal fragmentation? That can actually reduce the number of pages involved in your index. So that's where you can get some savings, absolutely. So, and what I'm mentioning here again is qualifying this by saying we should really, you know, don't worry so much about external fragmentation. Internal fragmentation is a thing. Okay, question online. During ETL processes, indexes, yes or not? Um, we know that depends, but do you have some advice? ETL process. Oh, oh, so create, if I interpret this correctly, should I have indexes during an ETL process? Um, I would benchmark. You know, it really does depend. So I would say go ahead and try it with your indexes and then go ahead and try it without see what kind of performance, because you can always enable your indexes after the fact, right? You can do your data load and then, and then re-enable your indexes. Now, the caveat to that is going to be if you have certain data conditions like, like some kind of conflict, like I specified it has to be a unique index, and all of a sudden I have data that's not unique according to the columns defined by that index. So it depends. <laughs> Sorry about that. Anything else? All right, cool. Yeah, oh, one more. I mean, at the end of the day, it's all the same behind the scenes, right? Whether you get access to you know, Azure SQL DB or managed instance or something and you don't have access to the operating system, something's still doing that in the background. So I would say it's, it's still subject to? Um, no, I mean right? VM, so you create a VM. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> yeah. No, this still applies because that disk is still a logical disk. It's, it's still going to be striped across all those, those devices. Yep, if I go back to, sorry, hopefully everybody got that. But yeah, it's, it's still going to be subject to this. Every hypervisor implementation is going to be subject to this. Cool. All right, well, thank you. I know 20 minutes went fast, but definitely appreciate it. Uh, feedback is appreciated.